Alistair Hofert van PwC sluit nou bij mij aan als we kijken naar hoe automatische proces uh, effectiviteit in die werkplek kan bevorderen. Hallo Alistair. Hallo, good evening. Alistair, um, robotic um, automation um, or process automation sounds incredibly futuristic. <laughs> uh, in simple terms, what is it about? Yes, good question. Um, robotic process automation is a piece of software. Um, it, it's not an Android that walks around that looks like a human uh, that's going to take over the world. It runs on systems today that can perform activities that humans can perform. Um, so I use the word swivel chair, anything that a human can do to log in, to capture, to move data, yeah. uh, visual inspection. Um, it basically mimics high volume repetitive tasks that humans do. Okay, so take us through, through a basic example, example in a specific industry. If I were to look at uh, banking and you wanted to open up a bank account, um, I walk in, you're at the bank, uh, you will ask me questions or I can even do this online. Uh, if I wanted to take out a loan, I would fill out a form. This happens thousands of times every year, even millions of times all over the world. A robot would be able to scan that information, uh, check against a regulatory body like Home Affairs in South Africa or anywhere in the world and see, are you alive? Is this real? Um, have you put the correct amount of information in? Mm. Go and check with the credit bureau, which may, ha which may have a legacy system, uh, the traditional green screens that, that we may still hear of today. Go in there and have a look for that information. Come back and then say, you've cleared credit. Um, you're good with the information. Your ID number is correct. Yeah. We're going to open a bank account and we want to have a card printed and then we'll send it to delivery to your home. Uh, humans would do that normally. Yeah. A robot does this nowadays sure. um, in basic terms. So let's talk about the sexy stuff. Um, this is this is all about data and data switching hands, and it's saying yes or no. But the 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 real sexy stuff around the um, the <laughs> software. Take us through that because that's the part that people don't really understand. Data and, and the importing of, of forms. I know it's taking something out that I really don't like doing, but there's some sexy stuff to it as well. There is. Uh, I mean, when you hear the word robotics, uh, the P part of process is quite deceptive because you think, ah, this is a macro. Um, and I remember the first time I saw this, I thought, this looks like Excel, it's a macro, and so what's the fuss about? Yeah. What's important is the minutes that you use a robot to gather data across any system you like, whether it be manual, whether it uses computer vision to scan documents or to scan images that it can find anywhere on the internet, or record voice and translate voice into text into a warehouse and dissect numbers and information, you can start putting machine learning algorithms around this stuff. Mm. An example would be the minutes that I can put a robot on a client-facing process, such as telephony, um, recording conversations that happen and then testing whether there is something correct or wrong in yeah. an insurance claim, for example. Thousands of things happen every day. The, uh, the sexy stuff today, I don't think is really that sexy, but it's very interesting what you can do uh, with neural networks and machine learning uh, to mimic human behavior in terms of thought processes. And robots are very quickly extending today sure. uh, into the area of artificial intelligence. Yeah. So th there's a big decision component there. Yeah. So uh, people are always scared that robots are going to either take um, over the world, which is a very simple example, but more practically is that they're going to actually take over our jobs. Is, is, is that a reality? The most elegant way that I can answer that question, uh, because I get this very often when I speak about robotics, is I think that the jobs of the future are not going to be mundane. Mm. Uh, in the beginning I explained that uh, software robots are there to mimic human behavior. And there is an element where robots will take over some of those functions, and I use those words very, very cautiously, take over. Uh, what will happen, and there are many examples that we've either looked at or encountered where humans would now do more advanced things, such as analytics, wrapping your entire business around a customer so that you can give insight. Mm -hmm. And a robot will not hold your hand when you make a decision to give you bad news or very good news. That thing is still needed, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that there will be a gigantic shift in humanity's focus on activities, yeah. and organizations are going to grow, and you're going to see something where humans learn how to behave and work with uh, virtual workforces in the future. Yeah. So let's uh, say, so for example, let's take a big, big corporate, and and you'd have to advise them. Um, obviously, uh, you're not charging um, uh, me for this, but if um, you have to advise their finance division on what these, uh, on what the software can <laughs> actually do um, for that division or their accounting division, okay. what can it do? 
There's two things I'll speak about straight away, which are straightforward. Uh, reconciliations is an accountant's uh, chore that you have to do, and this sounds very boring when I speak about it. Um, however, reconciling data between many, 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 many sources at the yes. same time. That's like invoices, statements, etc. Exactly. Yes. Um, if I send out 10,000 invoices and I have a general ledger, these two things don't look the same. One is a piece of paper with lots of numbers. Um, you pay me money, but it must be recorded somewhere, which is a general ledger. Uh, checking that the 10,000 invoices that left um, 20 systems across many countries equals what's living in the ledger can yeah. be automated. Yeah. Awesome. Alistair, it's fascinating. Um, I think if we have you in six months' time or eight months' time, it's going to evolve even more, and we look forward to yeah. seeing how you change the world. We're looking forward to that. Very good.